All right, engineers, so in this video, we're gonna talk about antibiotics that are gonna be specifically targeting DNA and RNA. Um, if you guys haven't already, go into our uh, pharmacology playlist and watch the antibiotics video in order. So specifically part one, part two, part three, and part four is just gonna be this last one here. Okay, so now if we start here, let's take a look at some of the antibiotics that are targeting the actual DNA. Okay, so specifically, let's start with this guy. You see this little guy right there? This is a cool little enzyme. He's one of my favorite enzymes. This enzyme right here is actually called topoisomerase. You know what topoisomerases do? Okay, whenever your DNA is replicating, downstream from that, sometimes you can get what's called super coils. Okay, where the DNA is getting like really, really coiled up. What topoisomerases do is, is they have, imagine I have two hands. Okay, like I'm the topoisomerase. One part of my hand here is, on the, is the actual enzyme. It cuts. So it cuts the phosphodiester bond, right? The, bone, the backbone of the actual DNA. It cuts that bond. And what that does is it allows for some of those super coils to be able to alleviate and get rid of some of that tension within the actual DNA. Now imagine my other hand. The other hand, I'm going to take the DNA fragments that I broke, the actual phosphodiester bond, and relink it together. So again, all together, I'm topoisomerase, one hand, I cut the phosphodiester bond, allow for it to unwind a little bit and alleviate some of that, that stress and tension from the coils. Then I'm going to take the parts that I, I, I nicked and fuse them back together. That's what topoisomerases are doing. Now, the first drug that we're going to talk about here, the group of drugs, is actually going to be under specifically quinolones. But more commonly they use is fluoro quinolones. Okay, so what are these uh, different types of fluoroquinolones? Uh, these different types are like ciprofloxacin, so cipro, so ciprofloxacin, um, and they also use levofloxacin, right? So these are some of the uh, specific types of quinolones. Now what are they doing? They are, so remember here's my, the two arms again, right? One arm is the cutting domain. What the actual cipro or the levo does, the levofloxacin, the quinolones, is they actually stimulate or increase the activity of the cutting part of the enzyme. Then, the levofloxacin and the ciprofloxacin, they come to the actual, like the ligand binding domain, the, the part that links them together, and inhibits this part. So now I can't link it up together. So what's the overall result? It just keeps freaking cutting things. And if it just keeps cutting it, it's gonna fragment the DNA. So it results in DNA fragmentation. So this sucker is going chop suey, and he starts just cutting through the DNA, all right? And it leads to DNA fragmentation. So what's the overall result? You're going to, let's say one part is the cutting domain, you're gonna stimulate that part. And let's say the other part over here is the actual ligand binding domain. You're going to inhibit that part. The overall result is DNA fragmentation. If you fragment the DNA of this bacteria, can it survive? No, so it's a bactericidal effect. Now, I haven't really discussed it a lot, but so let me, let me actually do this quick. So there is two different types of like ways that antibiotics are used. One is bactericidal, so bactericidal, and the other one is bacteriostatic. Bactericidal, to not make it complicated, kills bacteria. Bacteriostatic is specifically preventing the bacteria from like reproducing. So they're not trying to kill the bacteria, they're just preventing it from reproducing. So what were some of those bacteriostatic antibiotics? We already talked about some of them. One of them was the tetracyclines and the doxycyclines. The other one of them was the macrolides and the other ones we talked about in the folic acid pathway, like the sulfamethoxazole and the trimethoprim. Those are bacteriostatic. Okay, so now that I got that you know, off, let's go back into this. So again, it causes DNA fragmentations. Who? The fluoroquinolone, fluoro fluoroquinolones, the ciprofloxacin and the levofloxacin. Now, these are pretty good at being able to treat specifically, mainly gram-negative bacteria. So they're mainly good at being able to treat gram-negative, but they do have gram-positive coverage, but it's controversial or whether or not it is. But I'm just gonna put in this case, positive with a little question mark, okay? All right, what is Cipro or Levo used for? Okay, they're mainly used for genitourinary tract infections, like what? So they're used for like pylo, so pylonephritis, 
Um, so pyelonephritis, meaning that there could be some type of infection of maybe some type of kidney tubular structures or maybe even the uh, bladder. So pyelonephritis as well as prostatitis. So you know prostatitis is, uh, bacterial prostatitis is an infection of the prostate gland within males, right? Another one that they can actually uh, use the fluoroquinolones for is also going to be osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis. This is actually caused by uh, specific types of bacteria that lead to infections within the bone tissue. Okay, so again, you can get fluoroquinolones, which can have gram negative, uh, kind of gram positive coverage. And again, like ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, they can treat general urinary tract infections like pyelonephritis, prostatitis, other different types of UTIs, and bone infections like osteomyelitis. Okay, and again, they're basically playing a role in inhibiting the ligand binding domain of the topoisomerase and stimulating the cutting domain of the topoisomerase. Now, if I wanted to be specific, if I talked about gram-negative uh, bacteria, it would be topoisomerase type 2. And if I talked about gram-positive bacteria, it would be topoisomerase type 4. Okay? All right, now, let's look at another one. This next one over here is going to be worked on by this enzyme. This drug that we're going to give here is actually going to be called nitro furantoin. I hope I'm saying that right. Nitro furantoin okay nitrofurantoin is pretty interesting and he can actually work on gram negative and gram positive so he does have gram negative and gram positive bacteria uh, coverage okay he's mainly uh, treating urinary tract infections so he mainly is good at being able to treat UTIs that's usually one of the main uh, reasons for giving nitrofurantoin so it could be uh, UTIs caused by E. coli um, which is a gram-negative bacteria, most people know this one, or uh, enterococci, so enterococci, which is gram-positive bacteria, actually. Okay, so that gives you a good example of the different types that it can cover. Now, what is this nitrofurantoin doing? It's a very, very interesting drug. So let's say that we actually show him here. What happens is, I'm going to draw him with the N, so nitrofurantoin there. He's going to come in through the bacterial cell, and bind on to this specific enzyme. What is this enzyme here called? This enzyme here is called nitro uh, furan reductase. Okay. Now, what this enzyme does is this nitro furan reductase enzyme is it converts the nitro furantoin into a very, very active metabolite kind of like a reactive oxygen species kind of. It's weird. It's like a very reactive intermediate. So let's say out of this, I make a very reactive intermediate. So a very reactive intermediate. And what happens is this reactive intermediate is very, very dangerous. And it starts fricking things up. Like how? Watch this. You see the DNA? He comes over here and causes damage to the DNA. You see this RNA that you're making here? He comes over here and he damages the RNA. You see these proteins down here that you actually have? He's gonna come down here and he's gonna frick up those too. So what has he done? He's inhibited DNA synthesis, he's inhibited RNA synthesis, and he's inhibited protein synthesis. And he can even come up here and damage the cell wall as well. So he can really frick things up, okay? So that's our nitrofurantoin. Okay, so we'll, real quick recap here, we have the nitrofurantoin. It's gonna treat gram-negative, gram-positive bacteria, specifically uh, E. coli, which is gram-negative, gram-positive, like enterococci, and those are usually causing urinary uh, tract infections, right? And how is it doing it? It's binding onto this nitrofuran uh, reductase enzyme, which is converting nitrofurantoin into a very reactive intermediate, kind of like reactive oxygen species, similar. And then that causes DNA synthesis damage, it causes damage to the DNA, damages the RNA, and damages proteins as well as even the cell wall. And eventually, this can cause the cell to die. So it's a bactericidal effect. Okay. Let's come over here and let's talk about this next one here. That's going to work on this enzyme. This drug is actually called metro nitozole. 
And I have one over here, but we don't have any more antibiotics to talk about <laughs> after that guy there. So metronidazole, what is he doing? All right, so he has gram negative and positive coverage. You know what else he actually is very, very interesting about this uh, metronidazole? It also can actually uh, be used to treat um, uh, protozoan infections. So it actually has anti-protozoan action. And I'll talk about, actually no, let's just mention it. So what can this guy do? He can actually, so protozoan wise, so if I were to say which ones is he actually treating here? If I talked about the anti-protozoans, let's actually bring them under here. So what is he actually using to, he can actually treat Giardia. Giardia is very, very intense, okay? So it can cause excessive diarrhea, or as I would say, peeing out your butthole. Very, very intense trophozyte. And this is called, caused by Giardia lamblia, okay? More commonly, Giardia uh, lamblia. The other one actually is going to be kind of like causing amoebic dysentery. This one is actually called Int amoeba histolytica. So this one's hardcore also. It causes, uh, you know, the excessive diarrhea also. Very explosive and uh, excessive diarrhea. Now, what about the bacteria? So I mentioned gram negative and gram positive. What is it actually using to treat? So you can use this to treat um, H. pylori. So you can actually use it to treat H. pylori and the, the tuna stank, right? The bacterial vaginosis, okay? So very, very foul-smelling bacteria, all right, within the vagina, okay? So it's actually used to treat bacterial vaginosis. All right, so how is it actually functioning? So let's see metronidazole down here. So metronidazole, you see this enzyme? It's a really cool enzyme, too. This enzyme is called a nitroreductase enzyme. Not nitrofuran, nitroreductase enzyme. Reductase enzyme. What is nitroreductase doing? So let's say we take this metronidazole. Okay, so MZ. Here's our metronidazole. He gets acted on by this nitroreductase enzyme. And then what happens is he gets converted into a very, very active metabolite. So let's draw this now. Look, here's metronidazole. Very, very active metabolite here. Guess what this metronidazole does? He comes over here to the DNA. And what he does is, let's say here's the DNA, it disrupts the normal helical structure of this DNA. So now it disrupts the normal helical structure of the DNA. And by disrupting the normal helical structure, he exposes it to undergo fragmentation by certain types of uh, maybe nucleases. So what will that result in? That will result in DNA fragmentation. Okay, so again, go and chop suey. And then eventually, if this, ba if this DNA is, uh, bacterial DNA is actually fragmented, can the DNA completely function? Can the bacterial cell survive? No. So then this bacterial cell will die. So what's this last antibiotic that I want to mention? This one's a really cool one. This last antibiotic that I want to mention here is actually called daptomycin. So it's kind of newer. It's a newer antibiotic, relatively newer. It's called dapto. Mycin, and it's mainly used to treat uh, gram positive. So it's mainly used to treat gram positive bacteria. Uh, so mainly the actual Staphylococcus aureus. So it's mainly used to treat Staphylococcus aureus. So very deadly gram positive. So Staphylococcus aureus. Now his mechanism of action is extremely interesting. Look what he does. He literally forms a pore inside of the actual. Uh, bacterial cell membrane and cell wall. So now there's a big gaping freaking pore here. And now look what happens. If he forms a pore here, then what can happen is certain ions can start leaking in and out. So now there's this flux of ions moving in, and there's this flux of ions moving uh, out and in, right? So if there's a flux of ions moving in and out, what happens is it causes a very quick and subsequent depolarization of the inside membrane. So in other words, the inside memory becomes positively charged. As a result, it does this weird thing. So watch this. It causes a depolarization. So positive charges become existent on the inner side of the cell membrane. What's the result? Look at this. It inhibits DNA activity. 
Okay, so then it also inhibits RNA synthesis. So what is it doing? Because it's creating this depolarization, it's inhibiting DNA activity, DNA synthesis, it's inhibiting this ribosome protein synthesis, and it's inhibiting the actual RNA synthesis as well. Okay, one more antibiotic that we have to mention, okay? So this last antibiotic, and that's why I did have another one over there, is actually called uh, rifampicin. So let's actually put this one right here. So this last antibiotic is actually called rifampicin. Okay. And rifampicin is very, very interesting. This one is actually uh, mainly used to treat uh, primarily three conditions. So what are those three conditions? One of them is tuberculosis. So you can actually use it in the treatment of tuberculosis. And the other one is actually leprosy. So you can use it to treat tuberculosis, you can use it to treat leprosy, as well as Haemophilus influenza type B. So Haemophilus influenza type B. And actually, how is rifampicin doing this? Let's look down here. You see this enzyme right here? This enzyme is extremely important. This is enzyme is a DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Okay, so what does it do? Look what rifampicin does. Rifampicin inhibits this enzyme. If you inhibit the RNA polymerase, so the DNA dependent RNA polymerase, can it actually transcribe the DNA to make mRNA? No. And if you can't make the mRNA, then what's going to happen? This bacterial cell won't be able to survive, right? So again, one more time, rifampicin targets the DNA dependent RNA polymerase and inhibits transcription from occurring. And if transcription is inhibited, you won't be able to make proteins. And what can you use rifampicin for? You can use it to treat tuberculosis, leprosy, as well as even Haemophilus influenza type B. All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we covered a lot of information. We covered a lot of antibiotics. I really hope this made sense. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Until next time.